Hi, I'm Joseph. I love my cats and I want to help you ace your next SQL technical interview. Today, we have an SQL interview question about mistakes made during an interview. This problem is also about dealing with dirty data during an interview. Every question shown in this video is available for you to practice on Strata Scratch. Every, before I start solving this problem, I'll show you how to use the Strata Scratch platform. In the top left, we can select our database, schema, and table using these dropdowns. Below that, we have access to Strata Scratch's educational content. This is where you'll be able to select from any one of our educational problems or have one randomly selected for you for practice. In this box, we can write our query and the results of this query will appear in the table below. With that, I can start solving the problem. For this problem, we're given a query written by a previous interviewee and asked to fix it. This query solves the find the median price for each wine variety using the union of both data sets problem from Strata Scratch. We need to understand how the interviewee tried to solve the problem before we can fix their mistake. We'll start by looking at the tables. As we can see, here we have wine mag p1 and wine mag p2. The schemas of these tables are slightly different, but the information they contain is similar. The two columns that we care about are going to be the variety column and the price column. And luckily, those two columns are common between the two tables. Now, let's analyze the interviewee's query. We um, will have to understand each piece of this query before we can understand the query as a whole. Also, the interviewee made use of a subquery, so we'll need to understand that before we can understand the rest of the problem. Because of that, we're going to analyze this query from the inside out. The first clause we'll look at is the union all clause. The union all clause takes the table before and after it and creates a new table that contains every row from both tables. The only issue comes is if the two tables have different schemas. That will cause an error. It's important that you understand the difference between the union and the union all clause and why the union all clause is correct in this case. Both of these clauses return a table containing every row from both tables with one big difference. The union all clause removes all duplicates and the union clause leaves them in. The union all clause leaves them in. The union clause removes all duplicates. Yeah. The difference between having Variety's $20 price listed once and listed multiple times can have an impact on its median, so the union all clause is ideal in this situation. The interviewee then places the union all clause between two select statements in order to combine the data from both tables. They selected the variety column and the price column from the data sets.winemag table and the data sets wine mag 2 table. They then placed this entire union all clause between parentheses and used that as the input for a from clause. This is an example of a subquery. Subqueries allow you to use the results of a query as input. The results of subqueries can be used as input for from or join clauses or even as part of a where expression. In this case, the interviewee used the subquery to combine, combine and homogenize the tables before querying the information. The interviewer used the combined table to directly compute his median. To compute his median, the interviewee used the group by clause with an aggregation function. The group by clause is used to group identical data. The group by clause takes the name of one or more columns and creates a new table where every given column has a unique value and every other column is a list of values related to the one unique value. In the select statement, we can choose an aggregation function to calculate statistics about the group of information. So first I'll add the variety, um, the variety column, and then after I'll add my aggregation function. In this case, the percentile continuous function is used to calculate the median. The percentile continuous function is a function that can be used to calculate the percentile of given data. Let's quickly go through the parameters of the percentile continuous function. The first parameter is a float in parentheses Represent, representing the percentile you want to return. In this case, the median is the 50th percentile, so we're going to use 0 0.5.
Next, we'll add the within group clause, which is used to select which data is passed into the function. Inside the parentheses, we'll add order by price, because we want to calculate percentiles based on the ordered price group. Finally, we'll add an as clause and give our column a fitting name, median values. The resulting column will contain the median price, the median of our price data. This query should be a valid solution, but as we can see, I need to sorry, I need to name the from I need to name the table in the from clause. I'll name it wine mags because it's both of them. Running it, um, running it shows us the interviewee's mistake. His code is an issue and it doesn't run. The interviewee didn't catch this mistake because he couldn't run his query. You may have interviews where you're forced to write queries on a whiteboard and the computer isn't there to catch these mistakes. The issue the interviewee had was that he made the assumption made an assumption about the problem. Let's figure out what mistake he made. When we run our code, we get the uh, we get the message: union types, double precision, and text cannot be matched. The mistake the interviewee made is that his query was not made to deal with dirty data. Dirty data is common in real-world applications, so developers should be able to deal with it. So the problem is that while the two price col columns share a name, they have different data types. Also, both tables represent non-existent values in different ways. WineMagP1 uses nulls, and WineMagP2 uses the empty string. The interviewee made the assumption that the schema of both tables were the same, and that the price and variety were non-null, and that's why they failed to solve this problem. Let's fix the query. First, we'll add a WHERE clause so that each subquery only returns the rows, which both have a variety and a price. So for the first table, I'll add WHERE variety is not null and price is not null. This works because this table represents non-existent values as nulls. The second table uses empty strings, so instead I'll use where variety does not equal the empty string and price does not equal the empty string. Then we'll make the schemas of the tables the same. We need to typecast the price columns into the same data type. We can do that using the cast function, which typecasts the column by adding cast price as double precision. If you're using the Postgres database management system, then you can use the double column syntax to make your code more concise, like so. Price colon colon double precision. This isn't always available, but I prefer when it is. We have a valid solution now. I can run it and we get the results. So how can we avoid making the same mistakes as our interviewing? By asking questions, of course. Most of the time, there won't be nulls and empty strings in the table, and there won't be conflicting data types. But assuming that the data is always complete can ruin a solution. If the interviewee had simply asked, are these columns nullable? And what are the data types of these columns? They would have written a valid solution, and they would have shown the interviewer that they're prepared to deal with dirty data. So during your interview, remember to ask questions about everything. This problem was chosen to show the value of being prepared to deal with dirty data. By making assumptions about the problem, the interviewees in this problem lower their chance of success. It can be hard to understand an, S understand an SQL query from watching a video. If you need more practice and want to explore the tables used in this problem, then I recommend using Strata Scratch. Every problem in this video is available on Strata Scratch, and on Strata Scratch, you're free to experiment with each one until you feel ready for your next technical interview. You'll never run out of practice material with our set of over 500 SQL interview questions taken directly from real companies. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions about these solutions or SQL in general, Leave them in the comments and I'll try to help you. Have a nice day and good luck on your next technical interview.